Are there any other announcements? Let us rush it back.
the sea, and God's grace is wider than the whole of the earth. Trusting in that mercy and grace, let us make our confession before God and one another. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that in a world where we do not have enough, we enjoy more than we need. In a world where we live in fear, we take peace for granted. In a world where we have lost hope, we become indifferent to despair and grumble about small things. Hear us now as we lift up silently the burdens of our hearts. Forgive us, merciful God, and transform our lives to shine with the generosity, peace, and hope you offer us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, while it is true that we have all sinned, it is a greater truth that we are forgiven through God's love in Christ Jesus. To all who humbly seek the mercy of God in Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. And finally, we were going to go and have 
a day at the swimming pool at my mom's house or at Susan's house or somewhere, and we were going to talk about living water as we played in the pool. So as all of you can imagine, every time I read of our great plans for our CIA, I started to feel a little sad. But then I remember something, and I realized I'll remember something. Are we not still Christians in action? Is Christ not still with us? And even in the midst of everything that's happened, have we not tried to find some right spots? Yeah, we couldn't do our collections for food over the summer when we weren't, or over the spring because we weren't meeting. So we held drive-through food collection. And by the time it was all over, we collected over 1,700 pounds of food. And we're still doing our Thanksgiving meals and our Christmas meals. All of you are generous in your giving. We were called up for the year. I don't know how many places can say that. We have our Operation Christmas Child Boxes here. We're doing our dimes for hunger. And I don't think it takes very long for us to look throughout the Bible and see that the early Christians struggled just as much, if not harder, than we are today. Or were they not Christians in action then? So I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for continuing to be Christians in action, showing our brothers and sisters throughout our community, our state, our nation, our world, that Christ is still here. And as long as Christ is here, we will be Christ's hands and feet. So as we leave today, especially for the kids, I want you all to think about how we might not compete the CIA in our activities yet, but we will, but how we can be Christians in action in our everyday lives. I want you all to remember that. And then let me know how you're doing. Let us pray asking God to illumine the word for us today. Almighty God, in you are hidden all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word, and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yet again this morning, Jesus teaches by parable. Jesus is going to tell us the parable of the wedding feast. Now Luke also has a version of this. But Luke's version has a happier ending. Because in Luke's version, everyone who shows up for the banquet hall is welcomed in. In Matthew's version, there's an unwelcomed guest. And his faith is not too good. Now, I thought about being sneaky, because I figure most of you don't read the lectionary for each week. And I thought I could slide in Luke's version, and y'all did not know. But then I read the Philippians passage for today, where the Apostle Paul says that we have to focus on whatever is true and whatever is honorable. So, therefore, I think what we're going to do is not let ourselves off the hook, but to stick with Matthew's version, and it is Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. Hear now the word of the Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who had been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted calves have been slaughtered. 
and everything is ready. Calm to the way banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreating and killing them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the way he had but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in and saw the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This parable has three distinct parts. First, servants are sent out to inform the invited guests that the feast is ready. The king's banquet table has been set. And every single one of them ignored the servants. And some went as far to beat and kill the servants. This, of course, made the king angry. And in his anger, he avenged the deaths of his servants and burned down their city. The king sent his servants out a second time. But this time he instructed them to invite anyone and everyone. The servants did what they were told and carefully went to each and every person that they saw, whether they were appropriate for a king's banquet or not, and invited them to come. And in doing so, they brought into the king's banquet hall every single kind of walk. Finally, the king arrives to welcome his guests, and as he scans the crowds, he sees something or someone who greatly offends him. The man has refused to put on a wedding robe. And when the king calls him out on it, what does the man say to the king? Nothing. He's in shock. He thought that he belonged there too. I mean, he was invited and he did show up. Does it really matter what he's wearing? Actually, it does. It was customary in Jesus' day that the host of a wedding would offer to the guests a wedding robe to put on before they came into the wedding hall. So we can assume that this man refused the wedding robe that was offered to him. He thought he was fine just as he was. Just like he was dressed out there on the streets. He thought he was worthy enough to be at the king's banquet. He thought his clothes were clean enough. And here in the lions, the problem. It wasn't that his clothes weren't clean enough. I wonder if they weren't dirty enough. Anyway. I serve as a clergy, clergy representative on the executive board of the Clover Area Assistance Center. The board consists of retirees, social workers, business people, tech people, homemakers. This past Thursday, we had our regular monthly board meeting in a year that has been anything but regular. There have been all kinds of challenges that we face with food collection and distribution, with a limited number of volunteers, with seemingly unlimited number of folks who need help in our community. We were plowing through the regular business of financials and operational reports and getting further and further down on our agenda Almost to the end, when I looked at my watch, and I was pleasantly surprised how early it was. This meeting was going to wrap up in less than an hour. 
And that's good news for me because Thursdays are my sermon writing days. <laughs> and at that point, I had no idea how I was going to tackle this parable, which means I had a lot of study and a lot of prayer and a lot of reflection time ahead of me. But finally, we came to the last item on our agenda under new business. Karen, the executive director, made an appeal to each and every one of the board members. You know, each month, she said, we gather as the board to make decisions for the center. But sometimes I wonder if there isn't a little bit of a disconnect between what the board knows and what the center does. We're more than an operational report. We're more than a financial report. We're more than all of this collection of data and decisions. We serve people. We work with people. It might be time for the board to get to know the people. She didn't really say it that way, but that's what I heard. She was kinder. She was just inviting us to volunteer. And she only asked that we volunteer for the day. She says, come and see what it is that the board you serve how we serve others. And then she paused and waited. Silence. Just like the first group of yes in Jesus' story, we try to ignore the invitation. So then one of the board members who does volunteer on a very regular basis offered his own invite. If any of you would like to help with the food distribution, we do that two or three times a week. And we can really use the help because we like to send it out in teams because there's an awful lot of work to do. And we go to some places that some people might think are not safe. Some of these places are dilapidated, and they're filled with desperate people. But those desperate people are decent and good people. Silence again, but some of us were quick-minded enough to start at least flipping through our calendar to looking like we're trying to find an available date, somewhere in my calendar, I'll be able to do this. I thought about using the excuse that a lot of pastors use, well, I don't know if I'm going to have a pastoral emergency. <laughs> but it doesn't work too well now, but I keep it to the hospital anyway. <laughs> but again, no one responded with a resounding sign me up. I'll go. Obviously disappointed that she didn't receive the wholehearted response that she had for Karen and said, well, don't worry about contacting me. I'm going to contact you. Thankfully, thankfully, someone finally spoke up and quickly said, I move that we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Someone else beat me to the punch of the second. The meeting adjourned. I cannot speak on behalf of my fellow board members, but in the moment Karen invited us, I began to justify my non response. Why I didn't say yes to her invitation. You see, I gladly give my time 
a numerous boards, ministries, teams, and committees to do God's work. I cheerfully donate my money to several worthy causes to further God's kingdom. I obediently use my type A personality with all of its organizational and administrative gifts that God has given me in this church, whether y'all like it or not. <laughs>
before we go to the Lord in prayer, I do want to share with you some concerns and celebrations. First, I hope that you all received the news of Joel's uh, diagnosis, and uh, he and Lynn would appreciate the prayers for wisdom and strength during this time for them to decide how best his treatment should go forward. Also want to uh, keep in mind the family of Jerry Smith, that's Karen's uh, uncle who passed away this past week, as well as John Chetizinski, Ted's brother, who is having radiation this coming week, so beginning. Thir oh, okay, thank you. We do have celebrations too. We have this week the birthday of Sarah King and Bob Doolin and Katie Pernick, as well as Jeff and Tiffany's anniversary. Oh, happy birthday. Are you as old as I am, Blue? <laughs> Good answer. He will live another day. Unite your hearts with mine as we go to the Lord in prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all things that make life good. And pray that all people will share in the blessings we know for the world, for the wonders of earth, sea, and sky, for beauty in nature and wildlife, for the rhythm of the days and seasons. For waters that refresh and sustain life, for soil that is fertile and rich, for those who tend crops and care for harvest, for those who produce, deliver, and market our food, and especially for those working tirelessly during this time. We give you thanks, O oh God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For days to work and strength to do it, for the many different gifts and talents you have given us, for challenges met and fears conquered, and for moments of leisure and rest when you restore us. We thanks, O God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For human life, for talking and thinking together, working on and out problems and plans, for burdens and joys shared. For relationships that give life meaning, whether enjoyed face to face or at a distance. So God, and ask that all people share such a blessing. For our circle of family and friends, for children and their curiosity and joy, for the insight that comes with patience and experience, and for events shared and memories cherished. For all of our joys we celebrate today. We thank so God and ask that all people share such blessings. For your care and grace in times of anxiety, doubt, and grief. For healing in times of illness, confusion, and distress. For rejuvenating strength and vision in times of renewal for scientific knowledge and discovery to confront disease and improve health. So God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For the trust we have that you hear each prayer and know every need, especially the concerns on our hearts this day. That you love and care for each soul and body and that you walk with us through all our days and seasons. We give you thanks, O oh God, and ask that all people share such blessings. For the opportunity you give us to share cheerfully from the blessings of our bounty as we return to you your tithes and our offerings. Multiply and sanctify them within your will so that all people will receive such blessings. 
Now we turn to you, O God. With the words, Jesus taught all his followers to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I now invite Susan Jackson down for our congregational meeting. I now call our congregation meeting to order. Madam Clerk, is there a quorum present? Having heard that a quorum is present and noted by Clerk Susan Jackson, I now turn the floor over to Susan, moderator of the church nominating committee, to give us their report. Um, on behalf of the officer nominating committee, it's my pleasure to present to you Debbie Jackson, and David King as candidates in nomination to serve as ruling elders in the class of 2023. Are there any other nominations from the floor in which the nominees have already given prior approval? Hearing none, do we have a motion to elect Debbie Jackson and David King as ruling elders? Is there a second? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say nay. The motion to elect Debbie and David has been carried. Thank you. This adjourns our business of the called congregational meeting today. Before we close with the benediction, let me remind everyone that we are going to leave the sanctuary today in decent and good order, as good Presbyterians do. So allow your usher to come forward and lead you out. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we will to go to, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.